Let's get things going. Hi, guys. Episode 72 of Burns and Berman. We're, we're, back. we're rolling yeah. through this. Yeah, I made a little appearance, a little bit, when Josh was live. Yeah, a little bit. He shot me a phone that call That stream, bit. by the way, wound up being about five hours long after Jack left. I don't even know, Jack, if you know that. I stayed on until like five. <laughs> I, I, it was so fun. Yeah, I it was, was a good all, time. I was, we had like 80-something viewers most of the time. Like, it was great. Yeah. It was a big day. That's good. Um. Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Uh, past week went great. Disney was incredible, like always. It was a great week. Um, a lot happened while I was gone. Yeah. And there's a lot that I have to talk about. Number one, I think we start off with the most important piece for what I miss for my team is a new number 13 in Chicago. And that's Keenan Allen, baby. That's Keenan Allen. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited, Joshua. What do you think about that whole ordeal? Um, so the bears right now with Caleb Williams, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, I'm happy. Um, Jalen Johnson, obviously defensively. Um, oh, 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 oh hold up, oh. hold up. Forget everything. Yeah, we got this is it. Look at this. Jack, we have a problem. There's a little, there's a little space right here. But I'm working that, on it. I just noticed. Okay, but yes, it looks good. This looks Look good. This. I like the colors. Is it still? Yes, it is. It. Still the two stadiums in the back. Beautiful. Um, love it. Well, before we get into that, yeah, we have a whole revamp of everything. Yeah. Basically, moving up in the world. Yeah, this off season, new revamp of everything, new graphics, new logo. It's going to be beautiful. It's beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. It looks awesome. Well, yeah, no, this does look sweet. It looks I better like on here ball. than it did like in the picture when you see it actually. Yeah, no, it looks, it looks way really better, good. way better on here. But, um, yeah, Keenan Allen, Bear. Anyway, I'm yeah, excited. back to, um, back yeah, to the Bears. Go ahead, Josh. We're in the middle of talking. I think the NFC North, I said this last year too, is – Probably the most interesting division in the NFL next year. I, I think the AFC North is clearly the best. I mean, it was the first division in, in NFL history to have four teams the winning record last year, and Pittsburgh has gotten better. So, yeah. obviously, I would still assume that's still the – we're going to get into March Madness after this. Yeah. But the NFC North is the most interesting one because you have four teams in very interesting spots. The Lions trying to repeat what they did last year in terms of – NFC championship, trying to take the next step, keeping that going. The mm -hmm. Packers, the Cinderella run, that's not a thing anymore. Now we we know what the talent of, we know what Jordan Love is. We know Jordan Love is legit. We know the Packers are good. So are they going to be able to sustain that? The Vikings losing Kirk Cousins, but mm -hmm. defensively completely revamped. And their defense, at least on paper, is the best it's looked in a long time. And you still yeah. do have Justin Jefferson now. Yeah. We just don't know what the quarterback situation is going to be. And then you have Chicago, who we know what they've been for the last few years, but they finished the season well. Caleb yeah. Williams is coming in. I think right now, if I'm looking at Chicago, I'm looking at it. What was their record last year? Seven and ten? Seven and ten. I'm thinking eight and nine right now. Seven and ten again. Right now. Why? Because of the restart quarterback? No, because that's the caliber of roster you have. I think last year you guys overachieved a little bit record wise. I think last year you're playing you a fourth were, place uh, schedule. This year, playing a fourth place schedule, and all they did was add to the roster, and they're only getting one more win. Well, I think they were a five or six win caliber team last year that won seven games. This I'm year, really, I think they're. I'm disappointed, Josh. I am. Listen, I'm you guys have been like the worst team in the league for like two years. You're not going to be a contender overnight. They were the worst team in football, right? Three wins. Right. So you don't just become good after that unless if you have a guy like C.J. Stroud, and we know what he's got. Caleb Williams can be, but we need to see it first. Hello? You're frozen. Now you're not anymore. You're back. We're back. They had three wins, worst team in, a, in the NFL, right? Worst team, trade the first overall pick, get a massive haul from it, and then you get four more wins the next year with 
a decent amount of those wins being good wins. I mean, you beat the Detroit yeah. Lions, who were the NFC champions. Well, not the NFC champions. Made it to the NFC championship. It happens. And now you go into this offseason. What were the biggest struggle spots on this team? No, they got line, better. I, I, I like what they've done. Wide receiver. So now you have two wide receiver ones out there. And no, DJ I wouldn't Moore. call Keenan Allen a wide receiver one. Keenan yeah. Allen, he had his second best season last year. Yeah, because everyone else was hurt. He was the only player catching passes. Yeah, and he was still a fucking dog. And now you give him another wide receiver to go next to, he's going to explode. I think it's pretty much set in stone. I think will. he'll be. I think he's a wide receiver. I think he's a very good wide receiver too. You say that? I think that he's still wide receiver one caliber. But you have him, DJ Moore. The playmakers on both sides of the ball is just unreal. Now yes. that I'm looking at it, from going from worst team in the league to this, unreal. I think, and what I've seen a lot of Bears fans saying as well, and this is more coming from the field side. I'm disappointed if they don't make the playoffs next year. I'm very disappointed, which is a crazy thing to say with a rookie quarterback coming onto this team. That's the biggest factor of the Bears. I think that should be your ceiling. No, but I I swear to God, I think that from making the jump last season, from being the worst team in the league to seven wins, we're happy with that. This is the the year. This is the year to make the leap. This is the year where they have to make the leap. They have to. We'll see. This, this is, this is. They have the talent. I just, there's a lot of, it's just, I don't know if they've, they're in the they tier of the teams talent. capable of doing it, but I'm not going to come on here and say they're going to do it yet. Well, you but see, they end the year going five and two last year. And now you come into this year with a fourth place schedule with a lot of teams on there where you just look at the schedule and you're like, okay, they can beat these guys. I mean, well, yeah, I really yeah. looked at, hold on. Real quick, the uh, Bears opponents, obviously the division, and then you got the Rams, who can cause some controversy. The Rams are pretty good. Seahawks, interesting, very. The has been disappointing, by the way, this offseason. A team that's flying yeah. under the radar in terms of disappointing, Seattle. Yeah, I, and they're I, just an interesting they, team. They've, as they've a whole. low key lost some guys. They weren't even that good last year. Seattle yeah. is disappointing me right now. Yeah, and then and then you look at the rest. Jacksonville, that's a rough game, but that's at home. Another probably team. will probably that. will be probably will be the London game because the Jaguars live in London. And right. then the Titans, Panthers, Patriots. There you go. And then you go the road. You play the Cardinals. Should be able to pick up one there. They did this year in dominating fashion. 49ers, that's a tough game. Texans, that's a rough game. Between the two of those teams, that's rough. Houston's had – and we're talking about biggest winner of the offseason right now. My answer is the Houston Texans. Oh, yeah, no, the Texans probably. I, I love um, what they're doing right now. The Texans and then the Colts, which I think that's a winnable game, and then the Commanders, you should be able to go in there and do your job. So it really just depends. I mean, looking at that schedule, it really depends on if they can get a win. Because I think in the division this year that they're at least getting three wins in the division. It, they can beat Detroit. They showed it last year in dominating fashion. They can beat Detroit. They can beat Minnesota, especially without Kirk Cousins. Packers. All right, the chat wants March Madness talk. All right, we can talk March Madness, sure. I'm sorry. I was gone the whole week. I didn't get to talk yeah. about the Bears at all. I wanted to talk about them real quick. And I'm happy. I'm in a good mood with them. Um, fucking March, oh. man. Today's supposed to be Mock Draft Monday, but. It's not yet, yeah, not this week. We'll skip, we're gonna skip a week on that one. Yeah, March Madness Monday. But Here we go. We have an official bracket challenge that we're gonna do. Let me yes. get the link here real quick. I'm gonna put it in the chat right now. If any of you guys want to yes. join, I assume no there is no enjoying. password, right? Yeah, there's no password, it's public. All right, here you go. It is in both chats right now. Yes, join the group. If you want to go join and join the bracket challenge, you can. The winner gets a high five. That's all that's all we really got. So virtually. Yeah, virtually. So make sure to join that. It's on there. Um we'll post it on TikTok and shit too. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. But come and join. So yeah. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm disappointed mm. in myself on this. I did not watch 
as much conference tournament basketball as I wanted to this year. Either did I, Joshua. My knowledge of this year's season, I'll tell you what I know. I know what I've seen in the last hour of me watching a bunch of March Madness preview videos on YouTube. I know a couple of things just from hearing. This is hilarious, but a very good friend of mine, her sister is dating Cam Spencer, who is one of the star players on UConn. Mm -hmm. So I've heard about UConn all year. They're the number one overall seed. He's a starter. He's a great player. And just so happens that... um, Actually, I'm sorry. It's Cam Spencer's brother. But Cam Spencer's brother is dating... That's a big mix-up. But hold on. Cam Spencer's brother, though, is in the NBA. Oh, the Warriors, like, he's not a two-way deal. Okay, okay. That's fine. That's fine. It was almost almost a big mix-up. It was almost the a big, big one. East trophy was in her house yesterday, and she just like okay, randomly just like sent me a pic. Brandon was just like, "What's this? That's the Big East trophy. Where is that? That's my house. It's what?" So you just like know them? I don't know Cass Spencer at all, but I'm very, I'm very good friends with her, and she's okay. uh, her sister's dating Cass Spencer's brother. Good, Joshua. Yeah, but okay. Um, from what I've heard, just looking at some teams, Cinderella teams, I've heard great things about McNeese. They're playing Gonzaga who can't do shit in March. So I'm picking that as an upset in my bracket. I'm Um, pulling up my bracket. I already made mine. But I mean, it's just a 12, five upset. McNeese is getting talked about as a Cinderella team that people like, they went 30 and three this year. Really good, uh, scorer. On their team, one blanking the name on, and Gonzaga is Gonzaga, and they can't do shit in March. So, dude, I, I don't like have a lot of big upsets. I'm not gonna. I lie. felt like that was an easy one. You got to go with at least one eleven six. And again, yep. the one that I heard was kind of uh, an interesting one, being NC State. I know they won their uh, their tournament five games in five days. So that was yeah. my eleven. I'm not gonna upset. lie. I went into when I made my bracket. I made it last night. Well, I went into it, dude. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't lie. I didn't watch a lot of college ball this year, and I kind of just went into it with just like a fuck it mentality. I don't have that many upsets, surprisingly enough. I have a couple, and all of them are just because you know what? I'm down for it. You know what? That's just gonna happen because mm-hmm. every year I try and do so much research, and I try and look up and try and be the know it all when it comes to March Madness. And does it ever work? No, I I got a great story. About no, this, that year, this year, I just went, fuck it. Why not? And I have a homer pick to win it all. Who do you have to win it all right now, Josh? You come but number one overall seed. Have the personal connection. Makes sense. I got Illinois. So I got a homer yeah. pick for it. I, I picked yeah, Illinois. Well, there is no Maryland teams in it. Maryland didn't. Maryland was shit this year. Towson didn't win their tournament. So. We there, got two. No like we got Illinois and Northwestern. Northwestern. Um, if my Illinois State Redbirds could have done something in the tournament, then maybe they could have made it. But instead, they just dropped the ball and I lost their first game. I know Maryland has a Derek Queen, though, coming. Who's One of my five. biggest upsets, which is really just dumb because they shouldn't even be in the tournament, is Akron beating Creighton. Akron? Akron just, yeah, they shouldn't even be there. Akron, Akron? whatever. Shut up. Shut up, dude. Every day you try, I have to say something, and I say it wrong. (laughs) Jack, stop it. Dude. Akron? Knock it off. Knock it off. off. I'm not here for it today. LeBron James, like the kid from Akron? (laughs) I hate LeBron, so I don't care where he's from. Dude, no. (laughs) Clip that sequence. Who even goes to Ohio anyway, dude? Oh, my God. Okay, this is just a train wreck. But yeah, I took. Oh. How do you say it, Josh? Akron. Akron, whatever. I took them to beat Creighton. Um, they're gonna do their job. And then, what's another big upset that I have? Let's see. Kansas beats Purdue because I hate Purdue and they suck. And Kansas, even though they're injured, they're gonna go on a run. It's gonna happen. Something I don't understand. So UConn's number one overall seed. Yeah. Every breakdown I watched said that UConn had the toughest bracket. How did what 
why? What? So the number one overall seed, everyone is saying that they they UConn's the toughest region. It is supposed to be the opposite of their number um, one overall seed. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Yeah, Wednesday. it is pretty. It is pretty rough. Northwestern's pretty good. Um, Illinois, they got some dogs on there. Iowa State's pretty good as well. Um, looking through. That's another upset that I have. It's not in their bracket, but NC State. Yeah. Yeah, UConn is basically just they gotta try and make it through. But I mean, if they do, if they make it to the final four, they're basically winning it all. It's guaranteed at that point. Oh. UConn. Yeah. If they make it through, because their bracket is fucking rough. Yeah. It is. Oh, damn. Read this how does that happen if they're the number one overall? Winner of the Big East, Big Ten, SEC, and Big Twelve. Damn. There's a lot of teams I don't understand. I don't know how Providence didn't make it. I don't know how Seton Hall didn't make it. The Big East has gotten big disrespect in yeah, March Madness. Right. Yeah. yeah, they've gotten disrespected big time. How many Big Ten teams actually made it? Let's see. Northwestern. Maryland didn't. Illinois. They were terrible. Michigan State. Um, scrolling through. I don't want to miss that. Yeah, I've heard, about the, I've heard about both of these teams. But Grand Canyon is one I've heard about. It's like a Cinderella team. No. Let's see. Um, Wisconsin, Nebraska. Oh, six Big Ten teams. I thought there would be a lot more than that, honestly. I've been told the GCU, Grand Canyon University, is a team to watch. So I put them in my Sweet 16. Isn't GCU like the online? I always see the commercials. Isn't it like a big online school? I mean, I'm they have like an actual sure. That's always you know, you what see I see them too. all the time, right? Yeah. All the time. GCU, it's yeah. an online school. Yeah. Do you know about – you remember yes. Liberty, obviously, from college This was college crazy. Did you see no, this? I see no, I did not. Pulling it up. This was ridiculous. Okay. But speaking about weird schools like that, you remember Liberty from March Madness? I mean, not from March Madness, from college football this year? Yeah. Detroit, Oregon, yeah. Dude, that school is, like, really weird. Is so it? they have – yeah, they have dorms and everything. They have curfews every night at like 11, I think it is. 11 p.m. is lights out. You have to be in your room. Jack, you are nodding your head, so you know more about this than me. Okay, what it? Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Watch this. What it, where's the other? There it is. Watch this. No this sound. is yesterday. Yeah, I turned okay. it off. Guy, okay, Rudy. That's left hand. Wow. As a left-hand buzzer beater game winner wow. on national TV. That's crazy. Where's the other angle? Here it is. Left With hand. Jokic right on him. Look shot. My eyes closed. Insane. <laughs> it's casual. Yeah. But all I right. Mean, I I know much about Liberty. My, I had as somebody I knew and his sibling went to Liberty, I've been disgusted with him, but because they went there, I've started to learn more about it. And especially once Malik Willis kind of came out of there a couple of years ago, it's, I think it's yeah. Catholic. It's something okay. of Christian Christianity. one of those. I believe it's Catholic, but it's yeah. just a lot of rules that are of, they would expect of Catholic teens in early twenties. So like, you have to be wearing pants and a dress code like you'd be at a Catholic school. Yeah, I see. You have to be going to bed a certain night. You get issued citations if you, like, curse and stuff. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Uh, it's it's incredibly strict. Dude, that's crazy. That's so that's so crazy to think about because, like, college anywhere else is just like, fuck it, dude. Do whatever you want. Yeah. And then there's just, like, the weird schools like that. That's weird. All right. Thank you, Jack. Bye. There goes Jack with our Liberty News update of the day. But, um, it's a weekly segment on Burns and Burn. Yes, weekly segment. Dude, I can't believe that James Madison's playing Wisconsin. Big Cat versus PFT. That is electric. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. Um, and then they might play Duke after. I think that Wisconsin, that's going to be a great game. Wisconsin, James Madison. But I think that I think that Wisconsin's going to get it done. Hmm. It's not much of an upset if James Madison does end up beating them, though. It's not It's not that big of an upset. I mean, it's 5-12. I mean, obviously, it's a 5 versus 12. It looks like one, but James Madison's got some fire. Well, it's a 5-12. To, to me, that's not really much of an upset. We see What a year. year. Dude, what a year to go to that school. What a year. Yeah. 
I have James a Friday Madison. one that this year. Yeah, you had the football team everywhere throughout basically the entire regular season. Everybody was talking about James Madison. And now basketball, you've been dominating all year. They're going to get some crazy recruits at that school, man, for both. Oh, yeah. Bulls. They're going to get some high-level kids. But, yeah, so, I actually do have Grand Canyon winning against St. Mary's. I, I did text him. Uh, I He hasn't responded, but I, I assume he can't right now. But I'm, it's Wednesday. We'll get him on here. Betterman, dude, that kid. He'll give us a breakdown. I love him, but he's a fucking nut job with this shit. He'll give man. us our. He'll, he will he's, give us our breakdown. He he will take four hours. He he talks more than Michael. Oh, yeah. He does, but he knows what he's talking about. How many games has he been to this year? He said like ninety. I think he's at. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, 90, 90 college basketball games in one year. Yeah, I keep hearing about these guys too. And they're going against Gonzaga, who always loses in March Madness. Oh, the Zags. Everybody is talking about McNeese being a Cinderella team, and they're playing Gonzaga. Yeah, they're 30 and 3. That was an easy pick for me. Hmm. Let's see. Notable results. They beat VCU. They beat Texas State. They beat UAB. They beat Michigan. They did beat Michigan. Um, Okay. They beat Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islanders. Nice. Okay, that's that's a We got nine right. um, people in the bracket challenge, by the way. I just checked. Nice. Keep joining. If you want to have fun and join a cool bracket challenge with us, um, that would be awesome and amazing. That's a hell of a promo right there. What, me saying that? Yeah. Sweet. Do you want to do a mock draft? I'm, like, really in the mood to talk football. I know it's not really football time, but I'm, like, really in the mood. Oh, yeah. I'm fine with it. But Okay. Mock Draft Monday. We talked a little bit. We can go March Madness on Wednesday. Because we'll have – Yeah, March Madness, we'll go more into it on Wednesday, and I'm guessing no Friday show. All the games are going to be on the middle of it. On Wednesday because we can have Fenneman on. He can break everything down for us, and he can help us out. Yeah. No, that sounds good. I like that. Okay. All right. We'll do a mock draft. We will do a mock draft. I will pull one up. Guys, check this shit out, right? Let me pull this up. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> Dude, isn't this sick, right? Hold on, I'm going to make you really fast. Fuck. Okay, all right, back to regular programming. There we go. All right. Mock draft. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Commanders at number two. Dude, what why'd you doing? take Caleb Williams? It's not even worth talking about. So, <laughs> Drake May and Jaden Daniels has now become a little conversation here. Yeah, it has, but I think they're still going Drake. Um, I do too, but I think it's interesting. I, I, the whole like they signed Marcus Mariota thing, so they want a mobile quarterback. I mean, the the Colts of Anthony Richardson and their backup quarterback is Joe Flacco. That means nothing. Yeah, but I, I I still think Drake May is the guy. Yeah, Drake May is one hundred percent the guy. This I don't think it's worth talking about. This one, I think, is easy. Easy. We saw what they did. We saw the move that was made to get extra draft capital. I think it's a shoe in Oh! We saw the move they made. I, I, okay. I, I to me, it screams that the Vikings want to move up to number three and take mm-hmm. the quarterback. Screams it. It's not a bad bet. Why? Why wouldn't it be? I forgot to post, but I will. Oh, oh it okay. happens. Okay, but um, Minnesota trading up then, to three. Let me look with the, three, the little four, like eleven. draft pick value chart thing that they use. 2024 mm-hmm. version. All right. So the number three pick is 2,200 points. Seven. This is so interesting. Because they I, need I about, see... like, they would need but to But what if Minnesota in. wants JJ instead? 
I don't think they And do. they could stay back at 11 and take him. I don't think they do. So what, they trade This would probably James be the Daniels? package. 11, 23, and 129. That's it? Really? Maybe more. I'd say throw in like one more pick at least. Yeah. Throw in another late round pick. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Run it through, uh, Joshua. Not, we have to force it because it's it. They don't have a business with the team. Yeah, right there. Okay. I think they trade up. They take Jaden Daniels. Okay, that's fine. Where is he? There he is. Yeah, he's late on there, but Marv, he's going to the top. Yeah, Marv. All right, another interesting one. <laughs> yes, this is interesting. Now we were saying that Brock Bowers was a lock to go here a couple weeks ago. I don't think that that's true anymore. Oh, not at all. And I think that it's neighbors 100%. Either neighbors or Dunze, they pick their poison, whoever they want. This Chargers team has a lot of work to do. A lot. Yeah, they do. And it starts with a guy like Malik Neighbors here, but I also would not rule out a trade down, trade up for a guy like McCarthy, because it's just what we're yeah. saying. It's but, just it's it's just not good. But it's all we're neighbors. seeing. Right? Not good. Yeah, neighbors, run it. Giants. Good. Giants. All right. We talk about Giants. First of all, this team sucks. Yeah, they do suck. They are not good at football. This is a bad football team right now. Very bad. I Brian Burns was a great move. Yeah, but I don't understand why they did it. Why no, the I don't Giants, that. That's right so now, dumb. Who are trying? Like, are they? Do the Giants think they can contend? I guess. Because if the Giants were a team that was ready to contend, then by all means, go and get Brian Burns. But yeah, but they are they are not ready to like, contend. What what is? I, I don't get it. I think that you go with – I think that where do all teams start when they're trying to Well, you rebuild. go best player available here, and it's Joe Alt. Yeah. That's, I, I was literally about to say, where do you go when you want to start over is you go to the trenches and you build around Joe Alt. Well, you do already have a guy like Andrew Thomas, though. You do, but – Who is a stud. But you start with the offensive line always. You start with the offensive and defensive line. Because they did do that with Brian Evan Burns. Neal. That's It did help. Evan Neal was a massive bust of a pick. Yeah. He has awesome. not panned out at all. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a lot of stuff here. But I also think that J.J. McCarthy is not even close to out of the question here. Okay. Okay. I... But I'll give him Joe Alt. Hmm. I'll give it to him. Oh, wow. Um, Jack found okay. We have another update from Jack Connell. You know, he found some more news about Liberty. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw the text. It's, it's interesting. Um, for women attending class or convocation, they must wear modest length skirts and dresses or pants must be worn. I any media or entertainment, any media or entertainment displaying nudity is not permitted at Liberty to protect their students from lust and sexual immortality. <laughs> And sexual relations outside of marriage are not permitted at liberty in accordance with biblical principles. There you go. That's I, liberty don't news what, I don't know really what to say. That's just interesting. It's interesting, Josh. It is. Yeah. People love it. People love the Liberty News update. But all right, let's go. Um, Tennessee, Tennessee. Josh, you're the only 10 I see. All right. Ten Titans. Who do we go with? Another team. They're bad. They're bad, too. But while they are bad, they've made some moves. They have. They have they have acquired a lot of people. I'm not mm -hmm. sure how good all of those players are. Yeah. But they made moves. They bringing did. Bringing in Tony Pollard. Bringing in Calvin yep. Ridley. Bringing in Lloyd Cushenberry. Yep. Yep. I mean, Kenneth Murray on defense. Awuzie. Yep. 
They, they, it's, they, they made multiple signings. And of course, don't forget Mason Rudolph. Mm-hmm. But big dog, big dog, Rudolph. What, what are, what do we think of a Tennessee? I think um, you go. What if you trade down? I very well could. Get some more draft team. capital. Honestly. This dude, I mean, they could get on. Rome. They could get Brock. That's not what they need right now. Who do they have interest in? No. It's the not. Jets, who else? Jets, Broncos. 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 I, mean, I think we Jared Stidham's your quarterback right now, so. Yeah, let's go to Denver. Let's make that trade happen. Push it through, Joshua. All right, 12. Let's go. Uh, no, I think that you can throw 76 in there. 76 instead of 121. And then, and then 145. Make it a big package. There we go. <laughs> yep. There. Beautiful. Denver okay. moves up. They take J.J. McCarthy. Broncos might be the worst team in football Dang. right now, by the way. Yeah, I know. They're bad. They're bad. They, They're really if bad. you ask me right now who the worst team in the NFL is right now, it it might, might be Denver. Yeah, they're bad. They're bad. Washington. They Remember how much hate I got at the beginning of the season for saying that Washington was going to be terrible? People were Yeah, pissed. you did get a lot of hate for that. I remember that. I had to Everybody admit, I think Sam Howell had the worst team the in the league. Absolute- yeah, people thought that Sam Howell was the absolute promise. I didn't even hate Howell. I said the rest of the team they sucks. Do. Yeah, they do. True. Okay. All right. And now Atlanta. Atlanta. All right. You know what I think about them as a roster, but they need, and they need badly, help on the edge. And they got a guy. They got two guys here, and I think Dallas Turner is the pick here. Okay. Because this this offense is ready to run. This offense is yeah, good. They're ready to this roll. offense is this, really their good. Offense is good. Yeah. But defensively, they have a lot of work to do, and it can start with Dallas Turner. Yes, they Chicago. can. Chicago. This I, is interesting. I got a pick for you here. Who do you I think? Got, I got a pick here for you. Illinois, Illinois. Johnny Newton. Oh uh, yeah, it lines up, and a lot of people. Johnny Newton there. or Byron Murphy, people. take your pick. I've still seen talk about Rome, even though we did everything. No, I don't think that would be smart. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be smart, and I agree with you. You, I, I look you? at this number right here at the uh, right here, the remaining picks, and see nine of them. You can address receiver. In a very, very deep draft class, receiver wise, it's a lot of good ones. You can wait. And what about Jared Bridge? I could, well, Edge, you can wait for two. More interior is where I'm thinking. John okay. Newton. Okay. I'm with it. I could say it. You draft receiver, just don't do it at nine. But you do draft receiver. Jets. Um, This is a weird shakeup from where we've usually been. This is Now, they signed Tyron Smith. Yeah. They've signed John Simpson and traded for Morgan Moses, two Ravens. So they've addressed their O-line. They've gotten, they've addressed tackle, getting Morgan Moses and Tyron Smith. You got Elijah Vera Tucker and you got John Simpson. So Bro. you don't need a line. I could see receiver for sure. Rome. I like Rome. that. I like Rogers that. and Rome. Rogers and Rome. Who, by the way, uh, it sounds like is not running for vice president. Yeah, he's not. Sounds like that is not happening. Yeah. All right, New England. Now here we get to New England. Lot, another and... team. A lot of work to do. Yeah. This is not a what team. Do you think? So here's the thing. The whole reason why <laughs> I, I, I feel like them, they're not going to take a quarterback is they're not, they're, 
it's always so risky to not take a quarterback if you need one and you have a top five pick yeah. because, and in this case, a top three pick, because there is no guarantee that you will ever get that opportunity again in a year with a very good quarterback class. Mm-hmm. But they have so many needs. That's why I think they're trading down. And mm-hmm. you look here. I mean, it's not like they're going to take Bo Nix or anything. That's not going to happen yeah. at 11. So, they, they just, again, they have a lot of needs. Why not Why not Brock Bowers? You know, like, they, they have needs that are bigger. They brought Brock back Hunter Henry. It's not like tight ends a need. But BPA. Brock would, available. Brock would hate it. Brock would hate no, it. Of course but, he would. Yeah, I could but see But if, if you're New England and you're looking at the draft board right now, I don't like me going, oh, Patriots taking Brock Bowers. No, I, I would not predict that. But I'm looking yeah. at the board and looking at the way that everything has went. In this world of this top 10, why wouldn't the Patriots just go, all right, Brock Bowers? Yeah. I you know what I mean? Let's go, Brock. It, it, ju- it just makes sense. It's just It's there. Yeah, take him. Makes sense. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point, Jack. Yeah. With DeGene. But it, it's not – Bill Belichick's going. We got Gerard Mayo now running the show. And Elliot Wolf, we think. Yeah. All right, what about – are we going Cooper here? We could. could or – Come up with a woozy, eh? Or maybe we go there. Lucie, Roger McCreary. You need a guy like DeGene. How much slot? He doesn't play very much in the slot. He plays outside, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I could see that, DeGene. Okay. We can go to Gene here. I like that. We can. That works. Raiders. The Raiders. Right. Raiders. Another interesting one. Yeah. Very interesting with the Raiders. Um, don't need to touch that defensive line. So Byron Murphy's sitting there. No, my God, unless no. You, unless you just want to build like the best defensive line, like and just insanity. Then, Tom yeah. Telesco, though. I'm thinking about Tom Telesco, Chargers GM for all those years. Mm-hmm. And Telesco liked making a splash. That's why I thought they were going to trade up for a quarterback before they, for some reason, went Minshew. Fulaga, I see your comment about Fulaga. Fulaga makes sense. That's what I would go yes. with if I'm the Raiders. That's what I would yeah. recommend. That's what I was about to say, too. I'd recommend that. But I, I, I don't know if that's what they would do. You know? Or is this a what would you do or what should they do? It's what, what they should do. Yeah, Fulaga. I agree. But I don't know. <clears throat> Okay. Let's go right, Fulaga. Let's go, let's go okay. Fulaga. Yeah, we'll do it. All right. Burns, I think Ooh. I just got a text that was meant for you. Hello, I am Jasmine from Disneyland. My office is looking for people who want to work from home, no experience required, comprehensive, free training, flexible working. If you want to know more, please message me privately. Thank you. <laughs> should, should I send your way? Do Dude, I, I get paid at security home with this. Huh? Do you also want to give them your social oh, security number? No, and your... no, 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 but actually dead ass, dude, dude, do it. I know everything. I could fucking help people so easily. Why Why would Jasmine from Disneyland be texting me asking if I wanted a work from home job from Disney Burns? That's what I was about to say. They said it my way. Wait for it. Wait for You're it. gonna realize it's a, it's a scam, it. buddy. No, I know ja- that's a scam. Jazz- but still, send it my way, dude. Working from scam home me. So- yeah, and I went to Disney World, not Land. So now you can live in LA. You can go to Disneyland all the time. Nope, it's remote from home. They said. But how, yeah, how how would that work? I don't know. Are you just like, are you gonna be zooming in, watching people at the front gate? Like, no, it's probably like in. travel agency, maybe. Or customer support for people trying to book their vacation. I'd be able to do that. 
But except, dude, I could never work at Disney because I could never be nice 24-7. Like, there's got to be a point where you just tell somebody, where you could just, where you just, like, tell somebody to fuck off. Like, you know, like, it was the weirdest thing when I'm walking around the park. Like, that, that, there's no part of me that would ever have that, like, thought. No, like, dude, like, I was looking, I was looking, like, when I was walking around there, dude, like, everybody's so nice. Like, they can't be mean. Like, dude, I saw some some people being douchebags to these employees there, and they just have a bright smile on their face the whole time. It's like they're robots. Well, most of them are like college students on the college program making no money, and they just like hang out at Disney. But I wanted to do the college program. But, yeah, okay, New Orleans Saints, we're taking it's, it's bonus. Team. I'm kidding. Let's go. I, I... Jared Verse? Need edge help. Sure. Cameron I'm actually down for that. Yeah, I'm in. That works. All right. Indy. Indy, 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 Indy. Oh, we could do a trade. Just a train up there. So, uh, apparently, it's a hot pick here. Cincy, the Rams, Patriots, 23, Cowboys, Cardinals. Who does everybody want? Well, look at who's available. It's. All trenches yep. and corners. Yep. And hmm. who needs what help do you in think, the trenches? Matthew? Who needs help in the trenches and didn't do shit in free agency? The Dallas Cowboys. Hey, that's a good one. I'm down. They, I mean, it took them a week to sign uh, one player. Yeah. All in. Jerry All in. Jones said. All in. And, uh, yeah. So This could be a part of the all-in Before movement. free agency started, I watched a clip on the Rich Eisen show of talking yeah. about everything that he heard from the Combine. And one of the, and the one of his big things that he heard was that the Jerry Jones saying that they were going to go all-in meant, and I thought it was crazy, and clearly he was right, meant that Instead of restructuring Dak's contract because he has the second largest cap hit in the league next year and he's it's last year's contract, they were going to make Dak play out that one year, pay him all that money, which restricts Dallas's ability to sign anyone in free agency, going all in on this year because this is Dak's last chance and kind of just trying to run it back. And that was what he meant by all in, which, yeah, describing it meant. That's bullshit. That doesn't make any sense. Clearly, that's that's what he meant. Unfortunately for everyone else, that I mean, that that's not what all in means. But according to Jerry Jones, it is. Yeah. I, I interrupt one final time because something as of ten minutes ago has surfaced the internet. I don't know if you guys would care about this, but the Houston Texans uniforms have reportedly leaked. I thought those were Seattle thoughts. They look like Seattle. There's a few confusions the about it. Like why are the numbers, the numbers like look fake. insanely large? Why are they so big? There's a few things that have confused people about this. One, it's the same helmet as before, and it's the old or no, it is the new Nike uniform template. I have to double check that. I can't tell on that photo. Yeah, it is the new Nike uniform template. So unless somebody got really good at faking stuff, this is indeed the Houston Texans new away jersey for next year. Just look. First of all, I will Can say you this. Send me that picture. Can you send me that? Yes. I'll say this first of all. I am done with judging uniforms before I see it on the field in a game. Because. Dude, it's just, why are the so numbers many times, like, so aggressively big? So many times I see a uniform get announced and we think it looks one way. And it looks completely different when they're, when they're on the field. The Rams are a great example. We thought the Rams uniforms looked terrible. In game, I think they look great. Thank you, Jack. So I, I don't care. I, I really, I don't really care how it looks in this until I see it in. Plus, I need to see it. That's a well, from looking at this image, what do you think? I think it looks like the Seahawks. I think it looks horrible. Now, something to keep in mind with the Texans, something they have said before, I don't know if they're going to still honor this. They said it's not going to be a stereotypical uniform set in that every single uniform is the same with just different colors. They've said that there's expected to be different designs for all four jerseys. Interesting. So just because this one, like the home could look different. Now, they're not going to be completely different. It's going to probably be the same numbers, but so like, they're going to be probably... like an NBA team with their jerseys, essentially. 
different mm. designs. Probably. I don't know that. I would. This is just two sentences said by, like, I think it was their team president or something. Oh, okay. So there you go. That's okay. my last interruption right. for the day. Interesting. Thanks, Jack. Okay, back to yeah. our mock draft. What are we doing with the Colts? Are we are we trading with Dallas? I'm down. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I don't. I don't think plus the, the Cowboys. I mean, need. plus the Colts can wait for a receiver. Yeah, they can. Um, we're thinking pick swap, um, and then have Dallas give them eighty-seven too. Yeah. Okay. I, think, I think that should be it, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, fine. All right. Dallas moves up. They take Byron Murphy from Texas. Sure. And Seattle. Okay. Seattle, make it simple. Jackson Powers Johnson. I agree. Make it simple. We know this is happening. A lot of Homer picks in this draft, Josh. Yeah, there are. A lot. Um. Great. The Jags, who do you think? Is I'm saying Fatanu here? I could see Fatanu here. I mean, they got Anton Harrison already uh, last year in the, with the first round of Cam Robinson. So I actually know I don't because they drafted a tackle last year. Okay. So no. What about um, what about Nate Wiggins? That's possible. You lost Darius Williams. Yeah. Um, I mean, let, let me look at their let me look at the roster here. This is secondary. Um, okay, Josh. Tyson Campbell, Ronald Darby. Who's their third corner? Because they lost Darius Williams. Damn, they don't even have like a real third. Montaric Brown, I guess maybe would be their third corner. Or Warrior. He's still in the league, really. All right. Well, they need corner. Quinion Mitchell. Boom, Shakalaka. Love Quinn on the just because, like, maybe they liked him, but that's fine. That works. Okay, Bengals. Cincy. Cincy, Cincy. By the Cincy. way, we talked earlier about the AFC North. Mm -hmm. Things can change. The offseason is still very early, but this is the worst team in the AFC North right now, in my opinion. For sure. I, I really do. Now, that can change once. The offseason finishes up. Assuming they trade T. Higgins, what they can get for him. Assuming they do that before yeah. the draft. If they do that, they can get packaged and get better. If if we're living in a world where the season starts tomorrow, Cincinnati is finishing fourth in the AFC North right now. Sure. That's fine. I can agree with that. I, I so really we go with Troy Fitanu to help out the trenches here. Um, yeah. Thought Tani yeah. could work. Okay. Yeah, let's run it. By the way, fourth in the north still rhymes. That still means like seven, eight wins. Yeah, no, it does. It does. Just, okay. just so we're clear. The Rams. The Rams. Mm. NBA season. Uh, Rams. This is their first first round pick since Jared Goff. Well, if they went with your boy out of UCLA. Lot to? Yeah. I mean, obviously, you got a massive hole on defense now. And you do. Are you trying to breed the second coming? I like Lot to a lot. I know um, you do. You love and that makes sense, too, especially with the trade that I just happened. I can see it. Run it. Run it. But, hold on. Before we do that. The Rams have been very aggressive in signing offensive linemen this offseason. They saw they paid not one but two guards, like big money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They got Havenstein on one side, but they need another tackle. And look at the guys who are still there. Fashanu is still here. Yeah, I know Fashanu is. But I don't know. I think that could be like the surprise of the draft is that they get Latu. But they need another tackle. And like they – I feel like Fashanu is, makes more sense. 
In our draft world, it does because he's still here. Yeah. All right. So sure. I realize sure. we haven't talked about this yet. Let me let, let's go off here for a second. Because the best video we've had in a minute was my reaction to Patrick Queen going to Pittsburgh. Yeah. And you got clowned out of it in those comments. I did. Let me tell you something. (laughs) Ravens fans. If there was, if there was any talk about how the rivalry was dying, rivalry wasn't the same. And then regardless of the result being pretty one-sided recently, the intensity, even the games were the same. There was there wasn't necessarily the same hatred that there was back in the day with that rivalry, at least with the players. Yeah. PQ is one of the most likable players you will ever see. Like he's an awesome guy. And his teammates love him. But I'll tell you what, he pissed this fan base off in a way I haven't seen this fan base mad in a long time about a player leaving. And not just because he left. It's because he went to Pittsburgh. My reaction, this is not the reason why I did it, but when I went online on Twitter, I I know non-Ravens fans clown me. I I was speaking for this fan base because we are angry with this move. And also him talking about how he loves to be the villain and then not even 72 hours later putting out a tweet saying, like, Y'all can shut the fuck up. Like, you don't even know. You like starting complaining about all the hate he's getting. Less than 72 hours of yeah. going to the press conference talking about how he wants to be a villain is hilarious. Mm-hmm. But this rivalry needed a spark. A big one. Yeah. Not in terms of quality of play, in terms of genuine hatred. At least with the fans, we got one big time. Because whether it was the fact that the Steelers have been seven and one against the Ravens in the last since 2020, combined with Cincinnati is the bigger has been the bigger threat in recent years to the Ravens. Yeah. So it's been kind of one sided, and there seems, at least with the players, to be a lot more hatred with the Bengals than there are the Steelers right now. And while I do not think these players are turning on PQ because, again, he was a likable guy, a leader, and everyone liked him. When Roquan Smith walks into Akershire Stadium, still sounds so weird, mm-hmm. and sees number six in that jersey, you got, you got a lot more of a rivalry there. And I, I'm yeah. really excited to see it. And yeah, we'll be uh, hyped. All right. All right. Now, let's finish this shit. We've been live for a long time. We have been. Pittsburgh. Um, um, so, JC they, Latham? Again, I was about to say, like, tackle makes sense here. Yeah. But they drafted Broderick Jones. They, signed Bro- they drafted Broderick Jones in the first round last year. Yep. So, are they going to double dip on tackle, even if it's on the other side of the ball? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Their I defense so. is incredible right now. I mean, Patrick Queen, Mika Fitzpatrick, TJ Watt is a ridiculous combination. And Alex Highsmith. Don't forget about him either. Yep. No, I, I think still think they tackle need. I still think tackles are needed, and there's so many good ones sitting here. Yeah, J.C. Latham, let's go. Latham, that's yep, that's the right. guy Michael wants. Mm-hmm. Miami, 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 Miami. I can see him trading back, low key. Um, I could too. They've had they've had an interesting offseason too in terms of losing players. They've lost a lot of guys. Yeah, they lost a. Ton. Mm-hmm. Like a ton. They did. 
These I so, just don't see anybody in the spot that really fits them that much. Yeah, I can see that. All right, who who's it say trade back with? Uh, New England's not going to do it. Uh, Green Bay and San Fran. Who's on the board right now? Hmm. Let me look. Um, I could see San Fran moving up to get Latu. Have it be Bosa and Latu on that D line because we don't know what Chase Young's Ooh. doing. <clears throat> the Dolphins have lost a lot of guys, but they replaced them. I mean, they've they lost a lot of guys, but they've also signed Shaq Barrett, Jordan Brooks, Kendall Fuller, yeah. Jordan Poyer. Forgot to sign Jordan Poyer. Yeah. Um, Aaron Brewer on the O line and Johnny Smith. Mm -hmm. So they've lost guys, but they've also replaced them. Yeah, and I think that we could go with trading with the 49ers here. I, I, okay. I mean, there, there, there's the Shanahan connection, Mike McDaniel. Yep. 49ers trade up. And the Dolphins need more picks. Yeah. Um, oof. Niners go here. And then okay. swap. Yeah, that works. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Fuck. Niners trade well, up. That and, then, and then we go with Latu. Yeah. Not a corner? Dude, just imagine that D-line with him and Bosa. That's crazy. That's true. That's crazy. That's crazy, dude. I think if they see the possibility of that, they're like, Fuck it. Let's go. All right. He's your boy, and you don't want him off the board anywhere that I've suggested. You're like, eh. do That's it. True. There you All go. All right, Philly, you need a corner badly. Yep. Nate Wiggins, make it easy. Yep. Agreed. New England finally um, makes their next selection for taking Brock Bowers. You know who seems like a New England Patriot? Graham Barton. Barton. Yep. That's a New England That's Patriot right there. That's a New England Patriot. All right. I don't hate that. Yeah. That's a Indy. New England Patriot. Indy. Brian Thomas Jr. Okay. Sold. Green Bay. Who you go with here? It's a really interesting one, actually. Yeah. Huh. Where do they go here? One of the most, like, in retrospect, Probably the most shocking, but really, now that we're, we've seen everything, just confusing moves was the Aaron Jones and Josh Jacobs thing. Yeah, that was weird and just doesn't make sense. They now. didn't want to pay Aaron Jones, but then did want to pay Josh Jacobs. And Aaron Jones even offered to take a pay cut as well. Weird. Very weird. And they downgraded. They downgraded, at least in my opinion. I think it's a lateral move. Yeah, I don't I, think, I think it's. That. I'm not happy that I have to go. Like he's Josh moved up to three and took um, Jaden Daniels. Yeah. Uh, there is still one situation that's quiet right now, but is hanging over Green Bay's heads, and it is. Yeah. What's going on with Jair Alexander? Mm -hmm. And it's already a need as is. And Green they Bay have an loves, incredibly young offense. They love getting players and pissing off their veterans. So I could see Arnold here. Yeah, but in the case of a guy like Jordan Love, my God, did it work? Yeah, it did. So what do we go with Terry on hey, Arnold hey, here? Bro, don't fix it. Hey, that's what Bill Walsh made it. Did Bill Belichick made a career out of it until he sucked at it, which was yeah. replacing guys a year a year early. Yeah, you don't want to have you get rid of a guy a year early instead of getting rid of a guy a year late. That's something that mm -hmm. Bill Walsh in particular really liked doing, and Belichick has done as well. And I feel like the Packers are doing it too. Where the year you get rid of him, you're like, whoa, he's still good. 
And then you watch him. It's like, okay, now you should move on. Well, why didn't you do it last year when the value was at its highest? You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense. I, I feel like Taron Arnold, though, would be a great pick for Green Bay. I'm going to give it to him. Yep. Tampa. What an offseason they've had. You yeah. know why? Because they re signed everybody. Yep, they did. They brought everybody back. Mm-hmm. And for that reason, they're one of the biggest winners of the offseason. If not yeah. the biggest. Yeah, they brought everybody home. Yeah. And now you just add to that roster from last year, which yeah. I could see them going online. I could see them. I think an O line makes sense. Yeah, <clears throat> put them in next uh, on the other side of Tristan Wirfs. Yep, Wirfs and Mims. That Kirk could Cousins work. Wearing number eighteen, Kyle Pitts will wear number eight. Really interesting. Hmm. Yeah, it is interesting. They literally in the middle of the show signed uh, Tavier Thomas. Yep, uh, it was a solid corner. <clears throat> he's not let's going go with him round. he's not going to the let's first round i don't hate this as an idea but he's not going first round yeah no. let's go amarius mims yeah and the guy that i'm kind of starting to like a little bit he's still there he's still there mm-hmm. the guy i'm starting to get my eye on for the ravens okay all right so arizona they already got marvin harrison yep who do you take here joshua i don't know Who, who's the interested team? No. No. Arizona. Another team. I, mean, I get to see them. Player available. Best player available. Okay. I could see that. Tyler Newman. Um, best player Even. available, in my opinion, would be Peyton Wilson. I could see. Yeah, Peyton Wilson. He's a fucking dog. I really like him. Yeah, I know. Peyton Wilson is good. Me too. He's a beast. Yeah, run it. Run it. Yeah, I like it too. Run it. Uh, Buffalo is going to be pretty angry. Which I, really but... would. Yeah, I say that really going to piss Buffalo off. Yeah. So then I think they just go but... offensive line with Guyton. Nope. Nope. Um, ah, There's a couple things here they could do, actually. But. And I, I really do think, and again, as I said last time we did a mock draft show, I said this before the combine. I didn't say it, but I was thinking it before the combine. And I still stand by that. I think Xavier Worthy would be really, really, really interesting. Here. Oh, Jesus Christ, Joshua again? We're still moving with this? I Go said it the before Dante the combine. Mitchell. Give him a Dante Mitchell. Come on. All right. Give him a Dante Mitchell. We're not going Xavier Worthy here. I, I There's maybe a possibility, but no. Bradley we'll, Bozeman we'll, signs of the Chargers. Shout out Bradley Bozeman. Love Bradley Bozeman. Awesome guy. But, uh, all right, give him 80 Mitchell. Or you want a guy who's going to go in round, who might go in round one that's going to surprise people is Lab McConkie. Yeah, he might. He actually might go round He's one, good, too. too. I really liked him yeah. in the senior bowl. I saw there's a tweet that I saw a couple weeks ago from Daniel Jeremiah that I found very interesting. He said, watching film on all of the top corners, and I'm noticing a trend in a lot of these players' notes. And you know what that note was? Struggled against Ladd McConkey for a lot of the top corners in the draft this year. Burns is frozen. He is still frozen. Well, wait a second. Or am I frozen? It's probably him. Chad, is it me or him that's frozen? Oh, Hello? Oh, oh. oh. Can you see me? Hear me? You're back. You're back. Yeah, my Wi-Fi just completely went out. All right, I'm back. I was about to call you and then just tell you, but. Yeah. All right, I'm back. Did All right, so let's you, did you hear what I said, though? No. All right. Uh, Daniel Jeremiah had a tweet about a lot of the top corners and a lot of the note. And he said there was one note that he had in a lot of this year's top corners. And you know what it said? Hmm. Struggled against Ladd McConkey. 
Okay. So it's interesting to me. I, I think they could do that. They could use, but Lab McConkey is kind of like Khalil Shakir now that I think about it. So maybe not. They might they might want more of a vertical guy, which would be AD Mitchell. So go AD Mitchell here. Yeah. All right, Detroit. Yeah. Well, not in this one. Not in this one. But no. we'll we'll do it. We'll do a multiple round mock definitely before we get into before the draft for sure. Yeah, no, before draft, one hundred percent. And we're we'll gonna be. Um, we have not started planning this, but we will be running back the um, uh, creator TikToker mock draft once again for the third year in a row. So that's gonna be fun. Hell yeah! All right, Detroit. D town, baby. I think um, they're going online. Yeah, I'm fine with that too. I think that Guyton's got to go off the board. Nope. Wait, why? Why Guyton? Why for like the Lions? Not they don't need a tackle. Like they need interior. They could have one. They got Decker and Sewell. They need interior. Right. Which, actually, hold on. Who are the best interior linemen even on the board? Zach Frazier. They don't even. Have Who's trading? No one. Um, maybe not them. What, what's their next picks? Now, this is not the trade. Let's just see what their other picks are. 61? All right, they, they can go. They can yeah. wait. Yeah, they don't so – the guards are here. They could they, – they can move up in round two for a guard. Yeah. So, what? We can roll defense um, here. Defense, then. Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. I like that. I'm down. They want Jalen cool, Johnson and didn't get him. Yeah, they do need a corner. All right. I'm starting to like this guy. We're we're not there yet. It took me a little while before I really before I eventually landed on Zay Flowers last year as the guy that I wanted the Ravens to get. Mm -hmm. By the way, the Ravens never like drafted the guys that I really wanted to. And then in then they and they've done that now three years in a row. Like until 2021, it was never the guy that I wanted. And then yeah. 21, 22, and 23, they got the guy that I wanted. 22 was the best one, though, because I had Kyle Hamilton as my number one overall player and said he'd be a top five pick. And then the guy I wanted the Ravens draft was Tyler Linderbaum at 14. And then we got Hamilton at 14 and then traded Hollywood and got Linderbaum. So that that yeah. that's my that was the best draft ever. And you look, you guys look, you all pros. All right. Oh, Tyler Guy. Tyler Guyton's becoming a guy that I kind of like. Okay. If you want to do it, I, this is your team. I'm kind of like Tyler Guyton. All right, Miami. Miami, Miami, mm. Miami. This would Maybe. be – people would clown the fuck out of this because it does not address their biggest needs. Mm -hmm. But I look at Miami's offense. What do they love? I love these kind of. <laughs> but Tyreek and Waddle, they're both going deep threats. Both... You're saying they're you're saying they get lad here. You're saying they get lad right here. It makes so much sense to me. It does make a little bit of sense. I mean, it is not a need. Like, they said. shouldn't. There's bigger needs. But I, I, I kind of see Lad McConkey going Miami here. I kind of do. Well, let's just let's just go with Lad. Yeah. Yep. Oh, let me just do a There's not like a player here that just needs no. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. KC. They're gonna be pissed at Lad taking off the board. KC. I can see them trading low key. I could too. Or they go with like Troy Franklin. That's pretty early though. Mm. The Bears have just signed Byron Cowart, a defensive tackle. I think he's a former Patriot. Ooh! I think he played in New England. Let's see. Am I right? Let's see the picture. Right. Sure. Look at that. There's the there's there's the uh, picture. Nailed it. Yeah, we're winning the Super Bowl. Um, I 
The thing about the Chiefs that's so scary is that as good as their defense was, it was the youngest defense in the NFL. So they're just going to get better. Mm -hmm. Which means, in terms of just a little more youth, what they need is on offense to help Patrick Mahomes even more because, yeah, he needs help. Um, Yeah, Troy Franklin might make the most sense. Let's do it. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Byron Coward. The last team that he played for was the Colts. I told you, Paige, 20... but I don't know if he ever. No, the Colts was the last time team he played for in 2022. And he has one total NFL sack through his career. And when was he, he in, in New England? He was in That's New England in, 20, in 2019 and 2020. Hmm. And then in 2022, he had 12 tackles in 17 games. So what did he do last year? Um, Nothing. Nothing's on ESPN. I looked up the stats on ESPN. There's nothing. Let's see but a game log. No available game log. Um, He was on... I'll tell you where he was. He was on the Chiefs, Texans, Dolphins, and Texans. He was on the Chiefs, Dolphins, and Texans practice squads. That's our guy. Chiefs, Dolphins, and Texans practice squad. Yeah. Nice. He went yeah. to Maryland. That's where I know him from. That's the other reason why I know who he is. He went to Maryland for a year in 18. Okay, there you go. This is our final mock here. for, uh, Or not final, but this is our mock for right now. Why did there El Bandito Yankee Tequila just follow me on Twitter? Nice. Once again, Bandito. one more time, I will put in the bracket challenge if you were not here and you want to join it. Uh, here is the link. I'm going to put that right in here right now. And, yeah, there you go. Yes. Go ahead and join, join those. Please join Join, 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 join. Maybe join, join. some March Madness Please. streams coming on Thursday and Friday. I'm not sure. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. Possible. Potentially. Sick. I have class all day on Thursday, and I'm really No, I'm talking about it. me. I'm talking about me. Those are like all day streams that we did a couple years ago. Oh, yeah. I'm debating going to class on Thursday or not. So I don't know. But all right. Thank you guys for joining. Um, the new look, Burns of Berman. We're going to keep yes. changing, and it's going to get better and better. We appreciate you guys. And thank you for being here. And we'll see you guys on Wednesday, Wildcard Wednesday, and March Madness Wednesday. Yeah. Deuces, y'all.